IoT is here to stay. And it seems like more and more engineers are designing IoT and IIoT applications by the day. But as we design the next generation of these internet connected devices, we need to seriously consider how we power these applications. We need to keep in mind thermal management, operating and storage temperature, and physical size and weight, among other things. And guess what, my friends? That's exactly what we're digging into today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Bruce Rose from CUI Incorporated and I explore power supply design concerns associated with IIoT applications. We investigate the roles that thermal conduction and convection play in these power supplies and the benefits that CUI Incorporated Power Supplies brings to these kinds of designs. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from CUI Incorporated. Hi, Bruce. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you, Amelia. I always enjoy talking with you. Excellent. I enjoy talking with you, too. Okay, so today we're talking about IIoT, or Industrial Internet of Things. But Bruce, before we dive into the solutions in this arena, let's start with IoT in general. Yes, IoT in general is the Internet of Things, and it's been around for many years. And many of the early IoT applications were quite simple, such as perhaps wireless light switches, wireless microphones, and remote cameras. But as time progressed, we've experienced added functionality and complexity in IoT. Some examples of IoT application areas include sensors, enunciators, actuators, and control functions, both automated and requiring human intervention. As with most electronic products, we expect to see continuing growth of IoT for the foreseeable future. Fantastic. Now, Bruce, it seems to me that the number of IoT devices has grown a lot over the last couple of years. Yes, Amelia, I have to agree with that. As we look at this graph showing the growth of IoT, we see reasonable growth through about 2018 and then noticeably increased activity after about perhaps 2020. We expect this increase in growth to continue for many years and decades in the future. It can be noted that this growth rate of IoT is a self-feeding or positive feedback situation. As better sensing, communication, and control are developed, then more applications are developed using those technologies. And as more applications are developed, there are more resources to develop better technologies for those applications. So at the heart of IoT are concepts of monitoring and control, and AI can now play a part in those concepts, right, Bruce? Yes, Amelia, that's a good observation and description. If we keep in mind that the communications links can be either wired or wireless, it's easy to see how IoT can be used in a wide variety of applications. An IoT system can be viewed with sensors, enunciators, and actuators located on the periphery and computational resources located at the core. The sensors receive signals and pass it to the core for processing. After the data has been processed, then commands can be sent back out to the periphery to affect actuators or enunciators. We label the central processing as AI or artificial intelligence. AI can take many forms beyond the common text, graphics, and video creation so much in the news these days. Some examples of IoT AI include the control of a traffic light based upon the presence of vehicles, or perhaps determining optimal travel routes based upon monitored data. For these examples, we can see how IoT is often used with AI. IoT can be used to collect data for AI, and IoT can also be used to transfer control functions based upon the results of AI. So let's talk a bit about the reasons behind IoT a bit. Sure. A big reason for IoT is not knowing or controlling can actually be very expensive. And that is, for example, you might want to know who is in your home, 
if it's a home application, you might want to know where do your crops need fertilizer if you're a farmer. Perhaps when you're buying or selling something, you want to know where is the package that you shipped. And then if you're manufacturing, are your products being built to the correct specifications? Electronic and electromechanical components for monitoring and controlling are low cost, compact, and inexpensive, and thus can be used in large numbers and in a wide variety of areas. Okay, so it seems like more and more IoT is just about everywhere. Are you seeing that, Bruce? Yes, Amelia, I must agree with your observation there. Um, examples where we are already finding IoT applications and in installations include homes, healthcare, agricultural, business, manufacturing, and in public areas. The low cost, low power, and small size of sensors, enunciators, and actuators allow them to be placed in many locations and to be performing many functions. Okay, so what about IIoT? What kind of applications are you seeing in this arena these days? Thus far, we've been talking about IoT in general, but we can discuss industrial IoT or IIoT specifically. Some examples of industry locations would include manufacturing facilities, business offices, farms and ranches, public and private transportation, and mines. IIoT may be somewhat different than other forms of IoT in that most activities in business are done based upon the return of the investment, or ROI. Some examples of increasing ROI may take the form of legal compliance, where limiting access to areas of the business is required, or financial benefits, where minimizing waste or theft improves the business performance, or simple competitive advantages, such as monitoring to improve the quality of a product or service. So we also need to talk about powering these IoT applications as well, right? Yes, that is correct. We both need to look at powering the remote nodes and the centralized processing. And so as far as the external nodes, normally low power is of concern, and we may be able to use energy harvesting in the form of solar, thermal, RF or motion, and the power conversion efficiency will be very important. Peripheral products may also be battery powered, in which case battery charging would be required. Or they may be plugged in and grid powered, in which case one would look at the operating voltage range. And then a last option would be to use PoE or power over ethernet as a means of delivering power to the peripheral components. The centralized components may well be located in a data center or a box central to the industry or anything like that and would take the form of power requirements very similar to any other industrial controller or processor. So, Bruce, what are the biggest environmental concerns that we should keep in mind when it comes to these IoT power supplies? Sure. And Amelia, just as a point of clarification, by environmental concerns, we mean the operating environment and not sustainability concerns. But looking at the operating environment concerns, we need to address the IIoT applications, including the operating and storage temperature where the devices will be. It may be indoors. It may be outdoors. Obviously, outdoors is a far less well-controlled environment. We also see derating of performance in extreme temperatures of many of the power supplies and other components. There's also the need to protect the power supplies from damage and contaminants. Some choices might be an open frame supply, an enclosed frame supply, or perhaps an encapsulated supply. There'll also be the need for thermal management of the supply. Some choices could be conduction cooling using either base or top plates attached to the power supply or convection cooling with either natural or forced airflow, and perhaps using heat sinks to enhance the convection cooling. Also of concern of the power supply will be the size, the weight, and the susceptibility to mechanical shock and vibration. So there are different kinds of packages for these power supplies, right? Yes, that is absolutely the case, Amelia. Here are two examples of package styles. The upper picture is of the CUI VOF S12B series and is an open frame package style. The power supply components are not mechanically protected from the environment, but some advantages of this 
power supply packaging include possibly a lower cost and a lighter weight. The lower photo is of the CUI PSK S12B series and is an encapsulated style package. The power supply components are protected from reasonable objects such as dust, dirt, and moisture that might affect the performance of the power supply. Encapsulated packages are often used in application environments exposed to dirt, dust, or moisture. So can you talk a bit about the thermal management concerns you brought up earlier? Yes, it would be appropriate to discuss thermal management at this time. The upper photo in this slide is the CUI VHB150R series and has internal components that are thermally sensitive that are connected to the underside of the top plate. The user may choose different methods to control the temperature of this package. Air can be blown across the top plate to draw thermal energy from the package. A heat sink could be attached to the top plate to improve the convection energy transfer. Or a thermally conductive plate could be attached to the top of the package to help dissipate thermal energy created by the power supply. The lower picture is the CUI VOF 300 series with a base plate to help dissipate thermal energy created by the power supply. The concept of the base plate is like that of the top plate, but the base plate is normally attached to the system chassis. The thermal conductivity of the system chassis can be used to help dissipate thermal energy created by the power supply. So Bruce, when would we choose a power supply with an integral fan? At the top is shown the CUI VHK200W series, which has an integral heat sink to aid with either natural or forced air convection cooling. The forced air cooling in this case will need to be supplied by a user-selected and mounted fan. In the bottom slide is showing the CUI PCM 400 CF series with an integral fan. The inclusion of the integral fan allows for more compact power supply designs. The power supply design team can optimize airflow internal to the power supply to ensure proper cooling of critical components. So, Bruce, I've heard that companies in the IIoT arena can improve their brand image with the selection of the right power supply. So, talk to me about that. Yes, this is perhaps an unusual concept and I'm delighted to discuss it. And so, first off, internal power supplies, both AC to DC and DC to DC, are hidden from the end user, and thus the appearance is of little importance for an internal power supply. However, it's totally different when we're talking about an external power supply, such as a wall plug or a desktop style. These are visible to the end user and part of the product that they have bought and are using. CUI offers our customers the opportunity for branding of power supplies that include their name and logo in many different areas. We can offer their name and logo printed or laser etched on the label. We can laser etch the power supply case itself with the customer's name or logo. We can do embossing or debossing of the power supply case so that the customer's name or logo physically stands out or recedes into the case. And we offer custom colors of the power supply case and that includes the input and output cables that the customer may choose to match the rest of their product. In addition, CUI can provide cord styles and lengths and custom connectors as required by the customer. That's cool. All right. So, Bruce, what are the biggest takeaways you'd like my audience to keep in mind when it comes to IIoT power supplies? We would like your audience to remember that the selection of power supplies for IIoT applications is like many other applications. The customer will need to know the following characteristics of their application when selecting a power supply. They will need to know the voltage level or levels required, the power level or levels required, the thermal and physical environmental requirements. This includes a package style, perhaps it is open frame, encapsulated or enclosed. The customer will need to decide a mounting style, typically PCB or chassis mount. And the customer will need to look at thermal cooling requirements, which could include natural convection, forced air convection, heat plates, heat sinks, or internal or external fans. 
Excellent. Well, Bruce, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Amelia, you are quite welcome. I always enjoy talking and look forward to the opportunity to talk with you again in the near future. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from CUI Incorporated. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.